Okay. There. Right there. there. Right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the background. Oh, I don't matter. Okay. Hi, right, Walter. Well, really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. No worries. So, guys, this is Walter Stein, the owner of Paleo Adventures. This is my second time out here, and I love it. This is like the coolest thing I think that there is out there in the paleontology world. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and Paleo Adventures? Oh, sure, sure. We, uh, my, my wife and I started this company around uh, 2005. Prior to that, I made other people rich and famous. Made a, found, uh, found lots of uh, skeletons and fossils for other people, other museums, small museums. And Could you give us an example? Uh, I work for the Wyoming Dinosaur Center. I work for the Rocky Mountain Dinosaur Research Center. I worked for Tree Bolt Paleontology for, for quite a while. So, uh, Tree Bolt is one of the number one or number two commercial groups in the country. So I never worked for any of the big name universities. I don't have a PhD backing my credentials <laughs> up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I've been doing this for a very long time. What got you to start Paleo Adventures? Uh, well, you know, uh, I'm just a big kid in a sandbox. <laughs> I can relate. Yeah, yeah. You know, after a while, you, you want to strike out on your own. And eventually, what we want to do is, is, is build our own private museum at some point. Um, that's, that's really what we're working for. That'd be incredible. Yeah, yeah. Every, we've it's a, got quite the collection back at uh, HQ already. We do. We do. We have uh, we have some of the some pretty cool fossils we're pulling out of these hills. Um, some of them are very scientifically significant. We've got pieces of. I think we've got one of the smallest uh, triceratops jaws that have ever been found, baby oh, wow. triceratops. Uh, we have a plesiosaur, we've got a very short-necked, uh, short-necked, very rare plesiosaur that we're working on. Um, uh, and we've collected thousands of bones from, from this quarry and the, the neighboring one down, down the road here. Some of those we, we donate to museums and universities. Um, you know, we try and strike a, a practical balance between the commerce and academia. We're not quite academic, we're not quite commerce, we, we're trying to bridge the gap between the two uh, to make sure that uh, every fossil gets in, in the right hands. Yeah, I think that's really important because right now, like, the private fossil trade is, like, mm -hmm. quite booming. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to talk maybe a little bit about that? Like, I mean, I'm just an outsider looking in, but from sure. inside, like, what's that like? Like, sure. you know, private collectors versus uh, institutions of learning. Right? Right. Well, it's, it's, uh, paleontology has always been a very competitive business field career, however you want to <laughs> call it. Since the beginning, the, the bone beginning. wars. <laughs> since the 1800s, since the great bone wars. Yeah, absolutely. There's always been this uh, territorial battle, so to speak. Um, you know, started with Cope and Marsh back in the day. That transferred to certain different museums fighting over territory and uh, some of the better skeletons. And then in the 1980s, 90s, and up through today, it's become this battle between academia and, uh, and, and the commercial independent groups. Um, and, boy. How do I put this without getting too much trouble? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there's a better way. I, I think we all need to start, instead of yelling at one another and fighting over turf, we need to start sharing. Sharing information, sharing specimens. Um, we all love fossils. I mean, even the commercial people, the ones who are diehard foaming at the mouth, I'm just here to find money. <laughs> there's right. easier ways to make money. There's for way sure. easier ways to make money, absolutely. If, if you think there's a, another $8 million T Rex sitting out there, if there's a lottery ticket, you're, you're going to be digging for a long time. Um, you know, dinosaurs are not lottery tickets. Um, but even, even the ones who have that. Approach. Uh, they still love paleontology. They're in this because they love it. Uh, and academics, even though they have a very certain way of doing things, mm -hmm. just playing political games. Yeah. Yes, yeah, a certain way of doing things. They love fossils as well. And I think if we get both sides sitting down at the table, we'll find we have far more in common than we have apart. Um, the one side wants more contextual data uh, preserved and documented. Um, and the other side wants to know how to do that properly. So if we get them communicating, that's something we can 
share. Yeah, I mean, sharing I knowledge. Sharing of knowledge. Okay, well, so I then, use the shovel. I might use I just, the shovel. Oh, here it's a recording bit. again. Okay. Just go. I don't like that shovel. Okay. Leave it. That shovel stays here. That one goes with. No, I brought. I brought two. <laughs> here, film me arguing with Steven. <laughs> <laughs> I brought both of them down. Well, what'd you bring them both down for? That should be here. Because it was up there. <laughs> and I know it should be here. Okay, I was just gonna make a trip up to say nah, later, later on. Leave that. I may use that a little bit. Okay. We still got another hour. I know you do, but nice. what are you gonna be? There's a T-Rex buried in here somewhere, along with an Anzu and multiple raptors and some duckbills and trike, all kinds of cool stuff. So yeah, why don't you? Um, we got our camera working again. Okay. Um, would you tell us a little bit about the tooth draw quarry here? Um, sure. Um, basically, the tooth draw quarry is an ancient river channel. Um, it's in the lower lower one third to lower to one third to middle of the Hell Creek formation. Um, so roughly about 66, 67 million years old. Uh, this ancient river was flowing generally from the northwest down to the southeast. And we can tell that from the orientation position of some of the bones. Uh, and some of the zones in here look like it was really, really flowing fast, this river system. Almost, almost like a hyper-concentrated flow. I don't want to say debris flow, so it wasn't quite a debris flow. But there are certain zones in here where you're just getting boulders of ironstone and mudstone just tumbling, well-rounded boulders mixed in with logs and sticks and, of course, a whole bunch of bones as well, all just tumbling down this river system. Can you kind of, like, paint a picture of what this would have sure. looked like back then? Sure. If you've ever been to this, the southeastern United States, anything from the coastal Carolinas through Texas, uh, northern Florida, ever, ever been there? I've not been there myself, but oh, well, so you got to go. I've go. <laughs> got to get out a bit more. Yeah, um, but basically northern Florida area, you'd have lowland forest, you'd have swamps, estuaries, river systems all coming through here. Every once in a while, there'd be a volcano or something that would go off way, way over in Idaho and Montana as the Rockies are pushing their way up. And it put a whole bunch of dust and ash uh, out here on the floodplain. So um, uh, you, you'd have all these, these rivers, and every time they would flood, they would dump five feet of mud on the floodplain, and then you'd have an ash flow or something like that, and then the river would change course. So um, kind of a, um, a warm subtropical coastline, I think. And then, like, there was an in, inland sea here, right? Like, how, yes. how far out would have that been from our location? At this point, uh, there's, a whole, there's some debate about that. Uh, some folks would argue that uh, the seaway was mostly closed at this point. Um, others would still suggest that it was still open. But originally, the, the whole Western Interior Seaway split North America in half for millions of years, from roughly around 110 to about 70 million. There was basically you had two land masses. You had Appalachia, uh, the old Appalachian Mountains, a big land mass we call Appalachia, and then there was another land mass on the other side, what we call Laramidia, uh, with the Western Interior Seaway between them. And so you had dinosaurs on both continents evolving slightly differently in different directions. Um, and right here, we'd be on the, the, the eastern coastline of Laramidia, um, and the, the seaway would be far to our east, slowly retreating. Yeah, I always thought that was really fascinating. Like, I never had any idea before yeah. I started looking into the earth history more that there was once an ocean that cut up North America in two. Sure. <laughs> Super cool. Um, so I play a lot of games online. Cool. And there's this one called Saurian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've heard of it? Oh, of course I've heard of it. Yes. Yeah, because it basically takes place right here. In the Hill Creek? Yeah, it says yeah. Um, 66 million years ago in northwest mm -hmm. South Dakota, mm -hmm. which is where we are. <laughs> here we are. So that is super cool. <laughs> have you ever gotten a chance to check that out? I have had a very short amount of time to play it, um, unfortunately. I've seen, I've seen it. I've played maybe 10, 15 minutes of it, what I thought was pretty cool. It was a very, very cool game. Uh, and of course, I gotta like playing Dakota Raptor. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, no kidding. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, we haven't mentioned this yet, but Dakota Raptor Steiny is named Stein I. Stein I, Stein I. Excuse me. Yes, okay. Is named after Walter Stein here. Could yeah. you tell us a little bit how that came about? Uh, you know, I don't think I deserved it or earned that that uh, that honor it, it's an uh, it really is an honor to get a, an animal dinosaur any species named after you that's really cool it's a it's a 
humbling and, and just wonderful thing. I mean, it's like every dino nerd's dream. Every <laughs> dino nerd's dream. Since I was six years old, I was like, oh, it'd be cool having a raptor named after me, yeah. And, uh, you know, but I don't know if I really deserved it or not, but uh, it was named by a good friend of mine uh, named Dr. Robert De Palma. Or, oh, he's not quite a doctor yet. He's getting there. But north of here, uh, about 20 miles. Oh, really? Only 20 miles? That's about it. He's, he's working about 20 miles north of here. He's got some ranches up there. And uh, throughout the early 2000s, Robert and I would, would meet, and uh, we rapidly became friends. And, um, you know, we would spend a lot of times. Uh, he'd stay at our place in Belfouche, and uh, we'd stay up late, drinking a few too many Frosty Barley Pops. <laughs> uh, that's beer for you younger generation. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and we'd, we'd discuss dinosaurs, and I'd talk about what, the wor what work I was doing. He'd talk about the work he was doing. We'd compare notes, we'd do show and tell, he'd be like, oh yeah, check this thing out, like, oh, that looks like a, that looks like an overraptor, or this looks like, you know, such and such. Comparing finds. Uh, yeah, compare finds, and I'd be like, eh, I don't know what this thing is, what do you think this is? And he'd say the same thing, I got this, I don't know what this is, what do you think this is? <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway, long story short, um, a lot of times we'd stay up and we'd drink a few beers and we'd, we'd argue paleontology. And uh, I remember one time, and I can't remember exact year this was, but... Um, uh, we were staying up late, and and he asked me, so, so Walter, if, if you found a raptor in the Hell Creek, what would you name it? And I said, well, Hell Creek, you know, we've all the raptors are pretty much known by teeth. The chances of finding a, a skeleton or slim, you know, it's mostly just really tumbling up rivers. It's not great preservation potential for small dinosaurs. But, but, if I did find a raptor out here, a nice, good, complete one, uh, you know, Utah Raptor has Utah, or Utah has Utah Raptor. You know, Dakota should have a Dakota Raptor, don't you think? Yeah, that like, makes total sense. Yeah, said, Dakota Raptor has a good ring to it. Dakota it Raptor. <laughs> and he's sitting there going, mm hmm yeah, that's a good idea. All the while, the little stinker had already found it earlier in the no, week. No kidding. Yeah, and he wasn't telling me, so, uh, so that was kind of, that was kind of funny. And I, he didn't, actually didn't, I don't think he told me for another six months to a year afterwards and he finally said yeah i think i've got one and it's looking good i mean for a raptor you know raptors have hollow bones they're very birdy animals um they don't preserve very well if you've seen any of that we've found a few pieces of of raptor bones here and usually the ends are broken off yeah. yesterday i found a really cool one it was a forearm bone an ulna from a, a raptor um, a dromaeosaur, that would be the proper scientific term. And, oh, is that which, the one you showed me back? That's the one I showed you, there, yeah. And yeah. that might be a Dakota raptor. It rapper. might be. It might be. Which um, would be pretty significant, because they're yeah. very rare. I mean, they only discovered that one, or named it in 2015, right? Yeah. Well, so he, it's a very he, new genus. He found it sometime around, this is how long science takes. You know, you have to be very meticulous with science. You have to be, you know, cross all your, cross all your I's and dot your T's, right? Yeah. It takes a long time. Um, and uh, I think he found it 2008, 9-ish, don't quote me on that. Um, and then he told me the following year or so. And then basically I had to keep quiet about it until about 2014 when it was finally published. Oh, man, I thought that was took, tough. <laughs> yeah, it was, no, it was 2015, I'm sorry, 2015 when it was finally published. Yeah, and so, yeah, that was tough trying to, trying to stay quiet about it. I mean, that's, it's a really cool yeah. dinosaur, like... I, up until then, we didn't. There was really no like large uh, dromaeosaur that like. Yeah. Everyone vin envisions like the T Rex yeah. side by side with the Velociraptors, but that was not the case. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Velociraptor, China. Exactly. But the vision of like a six foot tall giant turkey. <laughs> <laughs> a turkey um, from hell. Yeah, and yeah. that just like completes like that that image to me of like yeah. that environment and just a big fan of that dinosaur did especially you? since sorry and i've played a lot of that game did you? Yeah. Did you? still play i still boot it up every now and then waiting for them to add the triceratops which is well, coming real soon yeah it's oh been... man get on that what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> talking to you guys talking to you guys get that done well walter i don't want to keep you too long we got to get wrapping up here pretty soon okay. um but why don't you tell folks uh, if they are interested sure. in maybe you know visiting paleo adventures coming on a dig like this sure. where they can find out more about you guys um 
Yeah, absolutely. We uh, we take families out on dinosaur digs. Um, we, we get a lot of teachers, educators. We don't get a whole lot of the diehard, frothing-in-the-mouth collector types, but mostly educators. A lot of families with young kids who, who think they want to be a paleontologist in the future, and, and we put them through the paces. We, we show them the proper, get them the right tools, we show them the techniques, and then we put them in a spot in the quarry where we expect them to find something. Um, and all the while, as they're digging, we look over their shoulder and tell them what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. You know, you're going too fast, slow down. Oh, you're going too slow, speed up. Don't use that tool there, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, yeah. And uh, so we get a lot of kids come out. Uh, you got to be 10 years old and up. Um, I'm actually made, we might bump that to 12 for next year. Um, and we might start doing some longer trips instead of doing the daily trips. We might just start doing two, three, four day trips. Oh, wow. But that'd be really we'll, like a whole weekend. A whole week, yeah. We'll, we'll see how it plays out. I know a lot of the folks that have young kids are, enjoy the, the, the one day trips. So we may do a mix of both. So we'll see. And your website's just paleoadventures.com? Yep. Yep. It's paleoadventures.com. We have two websites. Uh, if you want to do the. Find out about the tours and the commercial side of the coin. You know, find you know the few few bones that we do sell to help pay the electric bill. Um, definitely check out paleoventures.com if you want to learn more about the scientific research that we're doing here. Uh, then you want to go to the virtual dinosaur museum .com. Um, the Virtual Dinosaur Museum has our entire research collection. Uh, I think we're the one of the only private databases of. Uh, uh, I can say that we're the we have one of the largest collections of, of uh, private collections of dinosaur fossils from the Hell Creek. And uh, there's none that I know of that have a database with photographs and details and so on and so forth of it. And we add new stuff every, every year, every week. So, well, Walter, thank you so much for taking the time to answer my questions, tell us a little bit about what's going on here. Uh, guys, make sure to go check out cool. Paleo Adventures. Uh, you guys are on Facebook. Um, yep. Any other social media websites? I'm sort of on Twitter, but Twitter scares me. <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> That's a scary platform. Yeah, guys, they got a bunch of cool pictures on Facebook. Um, you might see our pictures coming up soon. Um, if you want to get a feel of what the digs are like, uh, they're a ton of fun. This is, again, my second time out here, and it won't be my last. Um, so, uh, hey, now it's pandemic year. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, that was one of those things. <sighs> uh, a double fist? Yes. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. <laughs> Thank well, you. Thanks so much again, Walter. I really appreciate it. And today was just a blast. A ton awesome. of fun. We've been looking forward to this for a long time. So awesome. look forward to coming back. And you're pretty booked for the rest of the season. This right? season, I got a handful of dates in August. And that's about it. So if you want to get in, get in quick. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Cool. Love later. you. Appreciate you. Catch you later. <laughs>